Hi guys, so in this video we are going to prove that there are infinite primes and what I mean by that is there there are an infinite number of prime numbers. So we actually have, I've written down here, the largest prime number that we know of. So there's computers that spend all their time working out prime numbers and the largest one we have is this. This is a prime number, 2 to the power of 77,232,917 minus 1. Obviously without that minus one it's not a prime number um so this is the largest one that we know of but we're going to prove that there are larger ones and in fact there are an infinite number of prime numbers this number here is so big that if you were to write it out if you were to write out the the number and let's say you could write one digit let's say you could write one digit every second, it would take you about nine months just to write out the number. So it's a pretty it's a pretty big number. And for sure, there's no way um, any human could have calculated that without the help of computers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to prove by contradiction that there are an infinite number of primes. And this proof was first um, discovered or introduced by Euclid in 300 BC, so a long, long time ago. And it was published actually in his uh, one of his famous books called The Elements of Euclid. Now I actually have, well, I thought I had the book. I went to, f a student actually gave me as a, as a gift the book. And I went to find this proof because I know this proof is in the book, but it turns out there are 13 books and I have the first six books, so I didn't actually have it. But I, of course, do have Google, which I also had to find this. So this is the largest at this at the time that I'm recording this video. Maybe they'll find a bigger one um, soon. Who knows? Anyway, this is how we're going to do it. As always, we assume the opposite. So if we're trying to prove that there are an infinite number of prime numbers, we're going to assume there are a finite, assume there are a finite number of prime numbers. And we're going to let, let P be the set of all primes. So we're saying there's a, there's a set P, and we're going to say P is the set of all, we say P1, P2, P3, P4, all the way up to Pn. So this is the set of prime numbers, and it's finite. There's a finite number of primes, and this is the smallest one, this is the biggest one. So this is like 2, 3, 5, 7, etc. Okay, next thing we're going to do, and this is what Euclid came up with. We're going to say let n, let n equal p1 times p2 times p3 times p4 times all the way to pn plus 1. I'll show you why we do that in a second. So n is we're multiplying all of the prime numbers that exist that we're assuming there's a finite set. We're going to multiply them all together and we're going to add one. Now, because we've multiplied all these together and added one, we cannot divide n. So n is not divisible. It is not divisible by any element of P. So we cannot divide n by any element of P as in any prime number. Because, well, you can divide it, but you're going to get a, a remainder, a remainder 1. So it's not divisible by it. Doesn't None of these numbers go into n nice and evenly. We always have a remainder 1. Because think about it, if you divide by p1, you're going to, the p1s are going to cancel, and you're going to be left with p2 times p3 times p4, all the way up to p, 
times n plus 1 over p1. So you have your remainder 1. Same if you divide by p2, same if you divide by p3, all the way up to pn. So n is not divisible by any element of b. Now this is, this is the most important part of the whole proof. Okay, now assuming we have that, I'm going to say n is bigger than n is bigger than um, and actually before I do that we're going to say therefore if n is not divisible by any of these therefore n has to be n must be a prime number now the reason for that is because re remember what I said I can write 70 as 7 times 5 times 2. Every single number that is not a prime number can be written as a product of prime factors. So if none of these numbers, if, if n cannot, if n does not have one of these as a factor, then it has to be itself a prime number. For example, let's say I pick the number um, 37. 37 equals what times what? Nothing. I can't. There are no numbers, so 37 must be a prime. Okay, so n must be a prime. But, but, and let's do not keep this in your proof. I'm going to say, but n is bigger than all of these. It's, it's, it's actually bigger than all of these multiplied one, multiplied together because I'm going to add one. So I'm just going to say, but n is bigger than p n, where p n is the largest element of p. So n is bigger than this. It's bigger than all of them, but it's like it's clearly way bigger than any of these elements. Therefore, therefore again, n, because n is bigger than all of these, n is not an element of p. So, can we see the contradiction? I've said here, I've shown here that n must be a prime number because of this thing because it's not divisible by any of these. But here I've said n is not an element of p, but p is the set of all prime numbers. So how could it be a prime? How can n be a prime and not be a set and not be in the set of all prime numbers? So that there's your contradiction. So we say this is a uh, this is a contradiction as p and again always write this is a contradiction and why because as p is as p is the set of all primes and there we go so, and finish it off by saying, um, what are we trying to prove? There are infinitely many prime numbers. Therefore, there are an infinite number. There are an infinite number of prime numbers done um that yeah that is a really nice proof and it's you could be asked that in an exam for sure in fact it specifically mentions this this example in the guide where where we look at proof by contradiction you certainly don't need to know this number here but for sure it is interesting okay that's it that's the last lesson on proof by contradiction I'm going to do. Uh, one more lesson on, on proofs. See you then.